Hi, everyone. I'm Shreya Saxena. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Biomedical Engineering at Yale University's Booth Science Institute in the Center for Neurocomputation and Machine Intelligence. My lab here focuses on data-driven and goal-driven approaches to modeling neural dynamics. Now, in the previous tutorial, we heard about generalization for artificial intelligence and how techniques such as building in inductive biases, transfer learning, and data augmentation can really help us in this goal. Now, modern machine learning methods have become excellent at representing input-output functions, but there is a long way to go when thinking about continued robust decision-making and actions over a lifetime in the face of changing external and internal circumstances. And this is exactly what we are really good at. So we react and adapt extremely quickly to changes in inputs and rules of the environment, as well as changes to the body or the brain. Now, how do we understand this generalization and what helps us achieve it so that we can better design artificial intelligence networks as well? In this tutorial, we're going to go from reading and understanding handwritten text, as in the last tutorial, to the writing or generation of movements. Now, what does generalization mean in the case of generating movements or motor control? Well, I want you to consider what happens as we're learning a new movement. Let's say we're learning a new salsa dance move. It doesn't take us too long, right? At least for some of us. Even though the muscle activity that we would need to output is drastically different from other movements that we're more familiar with. However, if the brain can learn a new movement fairly quickly, can we also learn a generalizable model of how neural activity leads to new movements and how to react to perturbations? Let's dig in. And first, actually, let's recap how we actually generate movements. Uh, movement generation is actually quite complex. So here we'll model the primary motor cortex, or M1. We can think of the motor cortex as the last region before activity goes through the spinal cord here fairly directly to the muscles, which contract in order to create movement. Now, motor cortex itself is formed of a large number of recurrently connected neurons that take in simple inputs from other planning and decision-making centers and output the muscle activity pretty directly. Now, how does the motor cortex find solutions to get us where we want to go, which is a fairly complex control problem? Here, we will try to understand how to best represent the goal of the motor cortex as it produces diverse and generalizable muscle activity. Now, how do we best understand something? Well, of course, we do it ourselves. So in this tutorial, we will train networks to produce the muscle activity of monkeys during arm movements. And this is known as goal-driven or task-driven modeling. What is a goal-driven model? Well, the goal-driven model was first introduced in vision neuroscience, where researchers trained artificial neural networks to perform object categorization, which is the same task that they gave monkeys. We can see that these task-driven or goal-driven models as creating the right inductive bias in our networks. In fact, the researchers saw that the resulting models don't just perform the categorization task well, but they also predict neural recorded neural activity from visual regions in the brain from the different layers of the network. Now, how can we come up with a goal-driven network for motor control? That was vision neuroscience, not motor control. So here for motor control, what are the corresponding inputs and outputs and the right form of the neural network. Well, what do experimentalists record? What are the kinds of tasks? Here, I'm showing you a typical experiment, showing a monkey reaching experiment. Here, experimentalists record from M1 or motor cortex neurons, as well as EMG or muscle activity while the task is being performed. In this case, it's a reaching experiment. So the monkey is reaching towards different targets as on the screen. So, this is the experiment. What should the inputs and outputs of our goal-driven network be? Okay, here I'm showing the network again, which we're using to come up with a goal-driven model for motor cortex. Okay, we have access, in fact, to the muscle activity while the task is being performed. So we can use that as an output for our proposed M1 network. Remember here, we're trying to model the motor cortex or M1 itself. We also have access to the task inputs as features, such as target direction and um, other information. We can use these task features as hypothesized simple inputs to the motor cortex. And what about the network itself? Well, the motor cortex is itself composed of a large number of recurrently connected neurons. So to build a goal-driven model, we design a recurrent neural network that takes in simple task-related inputs and directly outputs recorded muscle activity from the monkey as it performs the task. After we train this network, we can examine how or if the network emulates the solution taken by the motor cortex neurons by comparing peristimulus time histograms and generalization ability. 
So to summarize, in this tutorial, we're going to emulate the motor cortex of the brain by training networks to produce muscle activity from task features or hypothesized inputs to the motor cortex, and then assess whether the solution is brain-like, including assessing generalization capabilities of the network. Great, let's get to it. Good luck with the first section.